Yep. Yeah. 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 So it's Wednesday night in Aceh. This is the Sharia police division behind me. And we're about to go on patrol with them as they go around town and make sure people are abiding by Islamic law. If they see couples that are just sitting together, they'll talk to them, make sure that they are a married couple. So everybody's getting on their motorcycles and running away. The buzzkill division, Sharia police, killing good vibes. The strict Islamic code of Sharia is most common in countries such as Saudi Arabia and Iran. But now it's taking root in parts of Indonesia, a historically secular country. Previously common practices like socializing between unmarried men and women, drinking alcohol, or even wearing Western clothing are violations of the law. Unfortunately, this interpretation of Sharia targets some communities more than others. We've read a lot about the Sharia police going after gay couples and people having gay sex. How do you actually patrol? Mungkin ada laporan dari masyarakat, mungkin ditemukan juga di lapangan. Ada yang ketangkap basah. Kita seperti bilang ada yang homoseksual, ada yang lesbi. Yang mana yang melanggar dalam aturan-aturan agama Islam tetap kami tindak. Prejudice against Aceh's LGBTQ population, already widespread in the region, has now effectively become state-sanctioned. These two teens were arrested for homosexual behavior and agreed to speak to us about life under Sharia. What is life for you like here in Aceh? Kayak di penjara gitu, tempatnya kecil, kumu, jorok seperti itu. Aku dibuatnya tes di sini. Yang enggak mati aja. The Indonesian Ulama Council released a fatwa against the LGBT community, proposing punishments ranging from 100 canings to the death penalty for individuals accused of homosexual acts. Mungkin aku lebih lebih milih aku mati aja deh daripada harus ketangkap PH, harus masuk ke dalam itu, harus dikucilkan, mending aku mati aja deh gitu. While the death penalty has only been proposed by Aceh's most extreme hardliners, those caught violating Sharia law face harsh and very public repercussions. Why are you here? Why did they put you in the cell? Saya ini kami berempat main batu, judi batu. Are they going to punish you by caning you in front of everyone? Mau bilang apa? Kamu ya udah ikhlas saja lah. These taxi drivers were jailed for nearly a month for violating Sharia, awaiting the same fate that people across Aceh are becoming accustomed to. But even the executioners of Sharia law have mixed feelings about it. You're a moral enforcer. Do you see this job as an honor? Beban kita sebagai Al-Gwajo untuk mengeksekusi seseorang itu. Sebenarnya kami sayang kepada ini, pelanggar sayang juga. Cuman karena panggilan uh, tugas. The call for enforcement of Sharia is actually relatively new to Aceh and was amplified in the wake of one of the deadliest natural disasters in recorded history, which many here interpreted as a religious reckoning. We're standing in front of the Grand Mosque in Aceh, which was built in the late 1800s. When the tsunami happened in 2004, everything was destroyed around the mosque for miles. And this was one of the only structures that survived. And this event was a turning point in terms of the evolution of Sharia in Aceh. The tsunami killed over 230,000 people but also forced the end of a decades-long civil war between Aceh separatists and the Indonesian central government. Aceh was given partial autonomy as part of a peace agreement, allowing them to enforce Sharia as law of the land. 
Shah Rizal Abbas was instrumental in upholding Sharia in Aceh and explained its evolution to us. Pendapat saya bahwa tsunami itu ada tiga perspektif. Pertama, tsunami boleh menjadi tanda-tanda e, kekuasaan Tuhan. Tsunami itu menjadi peringatan bagi umat manusia. Yang kedua, tsunami boleh menjadi referensi bagi menyadarkan kita semua. Yang ketiga, yang kedua, tsunami itu ada kaitannya dengan e, perilaku kita yang e, tidak baik. Abbas and fellow hardliners believe the tsunami was the wrath of God, punishing the people of Aceh for living in sin, and that the way to fix their society was through punishment for these moral crimes. So if you're caught having gay sex, you could get caned up to a hundred times. Mm -hmm. That seems a little extreme, no? Yeah. Uh, uh, kalau dilihat secara matematik, mungkin kita berkatakan ekstrim. Tapi akibat dari perbuatan itu, itu merusak. Ya, merusak. Tidak baik uh, karena itu merusak fisik, merusak itu adalah psikologis. Medis sekarang ini coba dibuka, itu sangat besar pengaruhnya. Really? Nah, dari segi hukum alam, itu melanggar norma hukum alam. Maka Tuhan melarang itu. Does it appear that the behavior is being modified of the population by the implementation of caning? Itu sudah mulai perubahan karena masyarakat sudah bisa mengontrol uh, keberadaan yang bersangkutan. As the citizens of Aceh find themselves increasingly under this control, Sharia may be gaining traction in the rest of Indonesia. As a recent poll found up to 72% of Indonesian Muslims support Sharia law. And with the recent surge in attacks targeting minority Buddhists and Christians, there's a growing fear that as Sharia gains strength in the Indonesian capital, the country's long-standing legacy of secularism is at risk. In the capital of Jakarta, we spoke to Islamic preacher Shamsuddin Uba about why he supports the spread of Sharia. We just spent a few days in Aceh to look at the Sharia system that they have there. What is your view on the Sharia system that they have implemented in Aceh? Kami adalah agama Islam punya keyakinan bahwa dengan penerapan syariat Islam itu untuk mengurangi kejahatan manusia. Syariat Islam itu merupakan sebuah solusi yang terbaik. Ya sebagaimana yang sudah terjadi di Irak wal Syam yang sudah terbukti sudah menerapkan hukum Islam. Intinya Ustaz bilang bahwa Irak itu adalah yang terbaik dalam menerapkan syariat Islam. Iya, syariat terbaik. What was the last thing you said? Iraq. Iraq and Syria both have the best form of Sharia law. Di Irak, Syria, bah itu yang sesuai dengan syariat Islam. To clarify what I thought he meant by Syria and Iraq, I asked him about some cities that until now have been exclusively controlled by ISIS. Are you referring to the Sharia that is in Ramadi and Mosul in Iraq and in Raqqa in Syria? Are those the cities that you're talking about? Penerapan syariat Islam yang ada di Irak, ada di Syria, itulah satu sistem yang sesuai dengan hukum Islam yang dipimpin oleh Syekh Abu Bakar al-Baghdadi. Maka kami mampu untuk memberikan buku ini, mengupas tuntas tentang khilafah. I see. Yikes. What does it say? Islamia. It's about. I said Islamic Caliphate, and then we. <laughs> Good timing. And this isn't the first time that he's pledged support for al Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS. In March of 2014, the preacher led a rally of hundreds of people, encouraging them to join the Islamic State. And he was arrested and briefly detained for publicly promoting ISIS in 2015. What you're preaching is that there should be the establishment of an Islamic caliphate in Indonesia in which the leader will be Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Kami sosialisasi dakwah kepada masyarakat, kepada generasi muda Islam, bapak-bapak, ibu-ibu semua bergabung dengan khilafah ini yang dipimpin oleh Syekh Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi seperti ini. Mengapa hari ini semua negara tidak suka dengan khilafah hari ini yang ditegakkan oleh Syekh Abu Bakar al-Baghdadi, Syekh Adnani, dan lain-lain? Karena ada dua. Pertama adalah, dengan khilafah ini akan menghancurkan sistem demokratisasi di seluruh negara. 
dan merubahkan sistem ekonomi kapitalis. Mereka ajakan dengan seluruh negara untuk memberikan sebuah statement bahwa khilafah ini dengan kekerasan, pemimpin al-bagi dengan kekerasan memaksakan, itu salah. Kami bantahkan itu tidak baik seperti itu. Abu Bakar al-Baghdadi is leader of an organization that perpetrated attacks in Paris, California. Baghdadi's organization is responsible for countless atrocities and violations of human rights and death and rape and lots of bad shit. So I'm having trouble reconciling your pitch. Syekh Abu Bakar al-Baghdadi itu bukan melakukan sebuah kekerasan, tapi melakukan sesuai dengan hukum-hukum syariat yang berlaku di Irak dan Suria. Saya kasih contoh saja seperti pilot. Pilot Jordan itu dikasih keranjang dan dibakar. Akhirnya seorang pilot dari Jordan itu melakukan sebuah pembunuhan terhadap anak-anak kecil yang tidak bersalah. Bom itu berputihnya api, maka dikisuskan harus dibakar dengan api yang ada di keranjang itu. Itu salah satu contoh seperti itu. Don't you think what you're preaching is creating a psychological environment that makes it very easy to take that next step and to pick up a gun and and fight? Cukup bahwa kami hanya bersifat dukungan saja terhadap uh, ISIS awalnya berdiri di Irak dan Suria dan insya Allah. Semua negara ini akan bergabung di bawah komando sistem hilafah yang hari ini dipimpin oleh Syekh Abu Bakar al-Baghdadi. While Uba maintains that his messaging is that Indonesians should not engage in violence or radicalism, hundreds of Indonesians have left the country to join ISIS in Syria. And ISIS attacks have recently struck very close to home. And as the Indonesian government attempts to stop further attacks, along with ISIS recruitment attempts, it's clear that there's a battle for hearts and minds raging in the world's most populous Muslim country. With extremists like Uba opposing activists like Alyssa Wahid, the daughter of Indonesia's former president, who is fighting for the secular ideals Indonesia was founded on. Does the existence of a Sharia state create an environment of religious intolerance. The Sharia should live in the personal and everyday life of a Muslim. It should not be formalized. Because the fundamental of Islam is belief that God creates people from different types, from different background to help each other. We're the fundamentalists, not them. They're the extremists. Empire!